evening. Good evening, everyone. I know, it's sunshiny right now, but when you guys see this, it should be darker and it should be evening. You know, I pray you guys have had a great week. I know we've been trying to get stuff done all around the place this week. So I hope you guys have accomplished something. You know, between learning with my daughter on how to help her with schoolwork and just doing stuff around our farm, it's been a very busy week for us. In fact, you know what? Let's start with a little field trip tonight. Let's go to one of my favorite places here on the farm. Let's go over to my poultry building. Okay, so this place may be a little bit noisy, but it's one of my favorite places to be. See, it's where all my feathered friends, it's where they all hang out. Now, the yard, it's really muddy right now, so we're not gonna go and see any of my geese or ducks or anything. But, I have several friends that I'd like to show you today, okay? Okay. The first one is this little guy right here, okay? He's a little bit dirty, he hasn't had his bath yet for the year, but he is called a Sarama. Now, Saramas are some of the smallest chickens in the world. And another one, these have always been one of my favorite breeds right here. Mm. Mm. This little guy right here, she is called a white crested black Polish. Now look at those feathers on her head. You know, I have always enjoyed them, but I've always thought that they're kind of funny looking with those with those uh, feathers all over their head. And sometimes they get so big, they can hardly see it seems like. But they're so much fun. And I enjoy working with them. And I've spent a lot of time learning about the birds. See, I started with my grandpa. My grandpa, for years, raised chickens. In fact, when they were younger, he raised chickens to earn money. And see, this little girl right here, she's called a Millie Thor. Those were some of the first birds that I ever learned about as my grandpa was teaching me about birds. They taught me a lot. And I've read and learned a lot. In fact, back over at the house, I have an incubator that is full of eggs that I'm trying to hatch myself right now. But I had to go and learn a lot about birds all by myself. I had to read and learn these facts. You know, as much as I like learning about birds and about reading all about chickens and finding out about them, there is another book that teaches us all about truth. All about absolute truth. And that's the Bible. It's full of truth. It teaches us about God's world, God's word. It teaches us about God and it teaches us about ourselves. Over the next few weeks, I want to share with you some stories of a very wise king. Now, while people don't normally think of ch chickens as being wise and smart creatures, and I can understand that completely, they sometimes seem to be not the brightest things in the world. However, I like to think of my geese and my ducks as being smarter because they listen to me when I talk to them. But you know what? They probably still aren't much smarter than most birds. Solomon, however, was wise. And as we study the Bible and learn more about God, we can hear about where real wisdom comes from. Now, we have a new big picture question that we're gonna to try to answer. What does God know?
Hmm. You know what? God knows everything. In fact, God knows everything about the past, the present, and the future. So remember, when we're nervous about things like the coronavirus going around, we can be calm. And we can rest easy because we know that God is in control and knows what's going to happen. Now, today's story is called Solomon Asks for Wisdom. Well, who is Solomon? Well, he was the son of King David, and he became king after David died. Now, remember that David was a great king. I wonder if Solomon was nervous to follow in David's footsteps. Well, let's see how God prepared Solomon to lead the Israelites. David was old. He had been the king of Israel for many years, and now his son Solomon was going to be king. God had promised David that Israel's king would always be someone from his family. Before David died, he gave Solomon some instructions. Be strong and brave, Solomon, David said. Obey God and you will be successful. God will keep his promise that every king of Israel will come from our family. When David died, Solomon became the king of Israel. One night, God appeared to Solomon in a dream. God said, Solomon, ask for anything you want and I will give it to you. Anything? A king might have asked to live a long life or to have lots of riches. Solomon could have asked God to give him victory over all his enemies. But Solomon did not ask to be rich or to have a long life. Solomon wanted to be a good king. He asked for something even better. Solomon prayed, God, I am young and I do not know very much about being a king. Please make me wise and obedient to you. Help me know the difference between right and wrong. Help me lead your people well. God was happy with Solomon's request. God said, I will give you wisdom. In fact, I will make you more wise and understanding than anyone who has ever lived. No one in the future will ever be as wise as Solomon. Then God said, Because you asked for wisdom, I will also give you what you did not ask for. Long life, riches, and honor. You will be greater than any other king during your lifetime. <gasps> Solomon woke up and realized God had spoken to him in a dream. Solomon praised God and offered sacrifices to worship him. Solomon was a wise king who wanted to do God's plan. God planned to give his people a greater and wiser king, his son, Jesus. Jesus completely trusted God with his life. Jesus surrendered his own life to die on the cross for our sin. Solomon wanted to be a great king. He knew that it was more than just being the biggest, the strongest, the richest, the anything else that people can think about that says that that person's the best and they should be king and they're great. No, Solomon knew to be a great king meant that he had to trust God and to follow his plan. He wasn't perfect. In fact, none of us are perfect. There was only one perfect king, Jesus son of God. He completely trusted God and he died our death on the cross. He died the death to take away our sins. Now, we've been talking about missionaries a lot this year. Now, do you remember the Dye family from earlier in the year? 
they had prayed to the Lord for wisdom on where they should be missionaries. And you know, I'm sure they were thinking Africa, Asia, South America, you know, Haiti, someplace they were not thinking about Atlanta. In fact, they said that they thought that everyone in Atlanta knew about Jesus. They didn't need to go there. And yet they found out that in Atlanta, not everyone knew about Jesus. In fact, there was a lot of people that didn't. So when they got there, they found an interesting way to share Jesus with people. Does anyone remember what that was? That's right. They bought a snow cone truck and they started selling snow cones and sharing Jesus at the same time. So it got me to thinking, what can we do to share Jesus right now? We can't buy a snow cone truck. We really, we can't go outside and talk to people. You know what we can do though? We can write letters, we can write notes to tell people that we're praying for them, to tell them that, hey, things are going good for us here, just to let them know that we're thinking of them. You can write them to your parents, your grandparents, other family members. Is there someone that you know, someone in the neighborhood that maybe just needs a note? Even from our houses, we can share Jesus with people. We can help people find the wisdom that is in the Bible. Now let's look at our verse for this unit. It's James 1, 5. Now if any of you lack wisdom, he should ask God who gives to all generously and ungrudgingly, and it will be given to him. This book is from the, this verse is from the book of James. Now James was the son of Mary and Joseph, so the half-brother of Jesus. This book is written to Christians to, about how to live as a follower of Jesus. At the beginning of the book, James wrote about getting wisdom, how to get wisdom. It seems pretty simple. Ask God. Let's start by working on memorizing our verse. Remember, we're all still learning together. So if any of you have found a great way to memorize this verse, or if you've memorized it and want to show us, send us a video and we can post it for everyone to see and learn. Now before we end with song, let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for your word. We know that all wisdom and knowledge comes from you. We confess that when we try to do it on our own, we're foolish. We look to you for wisdom and the power to follow you. Thank you for your generosity in everything you've given us. We love you. Amen. Now, we're going to sing. I hope you guys have a great week. If you need anything, just let me know.